a student has been performing the simplex method in order to maximize an objective function and has produced the following tableau. We're asked to identify the pivot column and pivot row, which of course will allow us to find the pivot, which is the entry that's in both the pivot column and the pivot row. Then we're asked to perform the pivot operation and record the result below. Before we identify the pivot column though, notice how we have these labels on the far left, which are the variables associated with each row. These are the active or basic variables. So our basic or active variables are S sub two, X sub one, and P. These would also be the columns that contain only a one and zeros. Notice here, here, and here. I mention this because once we perform our pivot operation, the active variables will change so we'll change our labels here on the far left. To identify the pivot column, we look for the entry that's the most negative on the left side of this bottom row. We say left side because the pivot column will never be this column here on the far right. So we have a negative six here and a negative five here. Negative six is more negative than negative five or less than negative five, so this is our pivot column. When numbering the columns, we don't count these labels as a column, so this is column two. And now to determine the pivot row, we take the constants on the far right in this last column and divide by the corresponding entries from the pivot column. The smallest quotient indicates the pivot row. But since the pivot can't be zero or negative, if the entry is zero or negative, we could ignore that row. So notice how we can ignore the first row. We always ignore the third row because this would always be negative. So the only ratio we can find would be from row two, 500 divided by five equals 100. But of course we don't have to do this because row two is the only possibility for the pivot row. But I wanted to mention that because if for example, this entry here was let's say positive two, we'd have to take 325 divided by two to determine the smallest ratio and then determine the pivot row. But because row two is our pivot row, again, we don't count the labels as a row, our pivot is this entry here. Now we can perform our pivot operation, which means we want this entry of five to be positive one and the remaining entries in this column to be zero. Notice once we do this though, X sub two is going to be active, which is called the entering variable, and X sub one will no longer be active, or basic, X sub one will be the departing variable. Let's go ahead and perform these raw operations on the next slide. So again, here's our pivot. To make the pivot equal to one, we'll replace row two with one-fifth. We'll replace row two with one-fifth times row two. We'll keep row one and row three the same for right now. So one-fifth times one is one-fifth. One-fifth times five is one. One-fifth times negative three, negative three-fifths. One-fifth times one. One-fifth times zero is zero. And one-fifth times 500 is 100. So this is still the pivot entry. And now we want this entry and this entry, the remaining entries in the pivot column equal to zero. So to do this, for row one, we can replace row one with row one plus row two because negative one plus one would be zero. Now looking at row three, we can make this entry zero. If we replace row three with row three, plus six times row two. Let's perform this row operation by hand, and then I'll show how we can do this row operation on the calculator. So row one plus row two, zero plus one fifth is one fifth. Negative one plus one is zero. Negative two plus negative three fifths, negative two is negative ten fifths. Negative ten fifths plus negative three fifths, negative thirteen fifths. Negative two or negative ten-fifths plus one-fifth, that's negative nine-fifths. One plus zero is one, zero plus zero is zero. 
325 plus 100 is 425. And now for this last row operation, I'll show how we can do this on the calculator. And I'm going to go ahead and do this from the home screen. To enter in a row, we use these braces or squiggly brackets, not the parentheses. So we'll first enter row three, so we'll press the second open parenthesis, enter the elements of row three separated by commas, so we have zero, comma, negative six, comma, eight, comma, negative five, comma, zero, comma, one, comma, one hundred. We'll close this row by pressing second close parenthesis, and then we add plus six times row two, so plus six, and then we'll enter row two, so second open parenthesis, one-fifth, comma one, comma negative three-fifths, comma one-fifth, comma zero, comma zero, comma one hundred, close this row, and press enter. Notice how it's giving us decimal values. To get the fraction values, we press math, enter, enter. So we have six-fifths, zero, twenty-two-fifths, negative nineteen-fifths, zero, one. If we write it, if we move to the right, we can see the last entry is seven hundred. Let's go ahead and record these. Now, as I mentioned earlier, notice how x sub two is now active, and the one is in the second row, so now row two is associated with the variable x sub two. So again, x sub one is no longer active, which we can see here, x sub two is now active and associated with this row. And as far as our homework, we're only entering this three by seven matrix. I hope you found this helpful.